Okay, so when I talk about real world equations, you guys know this equation, because I know you've used it in science class, right? What, did it, what do the variables stand for here? Distance. What is the T? This is what we mean by literal equations. These aren't just random variables, they mean something. If we take the distance that you run in track practice and divide it by the time, we're gonna find out how fast you were running, right? That's what the rate is. I could rewrite this as distance times the rate equals your time. Another equation that is related to this, but we use different variables, is this over this equals this. What does the M stand for, do you think? Minus. And what is the H? Hours. So this is the distance. We're just being specific that in this distance, we're looking at miles and not feet or inches or whatever, right? We are saying this is miles, and we're counting it by the hour. We're being very much more specific with this one. Do you see what I mean by literal equation? Like these literally mean something in our world. In our textbook, um, and I'll have you guys open to it in a minute, I'm going to have you write down capital I, and that equals interest. This is a literal equation that's used every day in the banking world. But first we're going to identify what the variables stand for. P is equal to principal, and it's spelled a little bit differently than Mr. Christopher. Instead of P-A-L, it's P-L-E. We're going to use an R in this, and in this case, it's not just a rate, it's an interest rate. And T still stands for time. What we're going to write is what's known as a simple interest formula. Have you guys heard that people who have a lot of money can make money off their money? Yeah. Right? This isn't like me as a teacher. But people who have money and they can leave it in an account for a long time, the bank will say, if you leave your money here for 10 years, we will pay you interest on your money. So if you can leave it here, which kind of means the bank can sort of use it while it's there, they'll pay you to leave your money there and you will make money on your money. And that's what this equation is going to show. It starts off with a capital I for interest. It is equal to the principal times the rate times the time. The principal is the money you put in the bank. It's what you started with. The R is how much they're going to give you a percent for how much time you leave it in. So if you put in $1,000 and you leave it there for six months, they might give you 1% interest. Um. If you put $1,000 in and you leave it for 20 years, they might give you 12% interest. So every year you make money on your money. So the rate will change dependent on the time. Okay. And we're not going to deal with numbers here. We're just going to deal with the fact that this is what this equation is, and it is used in the real world. What if I asked you to solve this for the time? We would want to get the T by itself. What's with the T right now? The R and the, t and the P. And they're being multiplied by it. So to move them away from the T, we would need to divide them and we would divide them from both sides. And we would rewrite this as the interest capital I over the principal and the rate is equal to the time. 
And this is what the people who are investing their money would use. They would say, okay, on my statement, I see that you paid me this dollar amount of interest. I'm gonna divide it by the original amount I put in and the rate you told me you were gonna give me. Does that equal the amount of time that I left that money in? Okay, with that, I would like you to open your book to page 24. And we're going to go to the binder paper. At the very bottom of your page, there is a try it underneath basically the problem I just talked us through. And it says, what equation can Janet use to calculate the principal amount? So we're going to start, as always, with the original equation. Interest is equal to principal times rate times time. And we want to have this calculate the principal. That means we want the P by itself. What should we do? Divide it by two. The, by the P and the T. I'm sorry, the P and the R. Ah, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just wrong. The R and the T. I want the P by itself, that's why I keep saying it. That means to rewrite this, I'm going to get interest divided by the rate and time, and does it equal the principal? If you look on the top of page 25, example two is talking about distance is equal to rate and time. And I'd like you to look down at the try at number two that's about halfway down the page. It says Sarah is going to the store two and a half miles away. She has only 15 minutes to get there before they close. In this equation, we're dealing with distance, rate, and time. What do we know from this problem? We have two of them. We have the distance, which is what? 2.5 miles. And what else do we have? The time is 15 minutes. We usually deal with time in hours, so I'm gonna write that as 0.25 hour, because that's a quarter of an hour. What's missing? The rate. The rate. I could put those in here, but really what do I want to solve for? I want to solve for the, the rate. So I want this to equal the rate. To get this R by itself, what would I have to do with the T? Divide it by both sides, right? So that means rewriting this, I'm going to have distance divided by time is going to give me the rate. And what is the problem? 2.5 divided by 0.25 will give us this rate. Sorry, I wrote that kind of close in there. 